book review podcast where the books are split in two and figuring out just what is going on is always a toss-up. I'm Taylor. And I'm Jonathan. This month we're reading The Kingdoms by Natasha Pulley. And for this first episode, we read up to, but not including, part four. And just to jump straight into things, I guess, this book, uh, I kind of brought it up as a possible read. It seemed interesting, but... It it certainly does not contain the whimsy I thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> and by that, I mean, there is a lot of like war and political heaviness happening in this book. Boy, is there. It's a lot like there's some ch- some chapters I kind of just tune out a little bit because I'm like the number of ship related terms that were in the last sentence just tuned me out <laughs> a little bit. Mm-hmm. But it does. It gets into the weeds and then like. Um, I think we were expecting to just from the description that since it was like a time, there's going to be a time aspect to the book and there was this nifty little LGBT tag at the end of the list. <laughs> like we were like, oh, like this will be interesting. This will be not th- this, <laughs> but it, it is right. just kind of like a, it's like a primarily still a historical fiction that just kind of has maybe a, I don't know if it's a sci-fi element or just like a weird time thing going on. Like the most of the other aspects are are secondary to the historical fiction aspect. If you it feels, mm-hmm. yeah. Which to be fair, the description does include like the French having taken over England and like mm-hmm. the rebellion. I guess I glossed over those. Um, I like laser focused <laughs> on the mysterious postcard element and was like, ooh, mm, yeah, what a yeah. spicy little romance, maybe. We were looking for what we wanted. Yes, <laughs> not accepting what was in front of us. It, it so it hasn't been bad i will right. say it's just i guess i had i had definitely had to f- shift my expectations very quickly yeah we'll get more into it but i think also because like straight to the point there just aren't that many characters i really like and the some of the vibes i'm getting make me nervous <laughs> yes, <laughs> about I what agree. may happen <laughs> but we'll see what happens i suppose mhm Nope, I hear you. <laughs> Should we just go ahead and get into it then? Yeah. So we start off, it is, what year is it? 1898 or something? Something like that, yeah. Something around there. I wish I had taken better notes on, I, just the same way I didn't take good notes for history class. Like I did not take good notes on some of the things that were probably important to this story. I'm just not conditioned for it. Like I know, maybe not the exact year, but I think most of Joe's present life, quote unquote, is like 1900 um so i think two years before that that's when he steps off the train and that's when his gotcha. memory basically restarts because joe our main character uh remembers nothing he's 43 so we got an, an older character interesting i think i forget he's that old me too honestly you saying that now i was like oh i i didn't i didn't know that <laughs> i think it's because he's like so he's both clueless and also like it feels like he's just starting to be alive right which yeah it does make him feel like 20 right <laughs> right um, but that makes sense right because because of the whole memory loss thing and um, and he's he isn't starting from nothing too right like he says like oh i like have a vague understanding of the map of london and you know some like distant thoughts that i might have had a life before this moment you know and like just like he can speak some languages um, though yeah. he doesn't really know it until those get tested but He's, he knows he's not starting with anything. He has skills, I guess, just, yeah, not memories. Yeah, it's the, it's different types of memory. You have, like, your mm-hmm. episodic memory, and then you have, I don't remember what the other one is called, but, like, how you know how to do things. like Right, like a habitual type. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, yeah, steps off the train. He has two tickets, we find out later. So one for him, one for somebody else. Who knows? He does get helped by this random stranger who, let's be honest, might not be a stranger. Yeah, I'm very suspicious that that's a stranger. <laughs> like, I think it's it's got to be someone who knew. I mean, at first I thought that's the person who the other ticket was for. Yeah. And they're just not, they're just being coy because they want Joe to be in a state of forgetting. So they wouldn't say something. And like, they, that person mentions, we had a whole conversation on the train. Don't you remember? And it feels a bit like a test just to make sure that the amnesia set in. Yeah. I, I'm just like hesitant to believe it'll be a character important, like important because Joe is, talks in the past tense for a moment and is like, when I try to remember 
who that was months later, I can't. So it's somebody that does not come back up again. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like throwaway characters in this story, I think. Yes, like, Just because I think it's so. like a, a war, right? And there's like all these like, I don't know, nameless soldiers around. So it could really be anyone. Yeah, I think it might just be a case of somebody being helpful. And also we learn when Joe is at the asylum that other people have experienced the same thing. So it this pers this man might just have known about these types of cases. Mm, and that's why that's he true. was so willing to help. I do think it's interesting that they mentioned that because is it that people are experiencing this because they were also pulled back in time or something? Or is it like because there's this alternate timeline, like there's some sort of break, like a break in time that's causing people to remember their alternate lives or something? Or in that like, I don't know, and somehow that incites oh. the amnesia. You know, I was like trying to see if there was like a funky time thing causing other people the amnesia that didn't require them to go through the same path that joe does yeah because joe's joe's case is interesting as well right because he's the only one that seems to not regain his memories it seems right. like everybody else even though they have the memory issue like it resolves itself but the question is does it actually resolve itself correctly right because right. if they had a previous past that got changed because of something that was happening in the past, then maybe they did forget and they were just given new memories that fit this timeline. Mm. Ah, that's interesting, actually. <laughs> but then Joe would that be different. Maybe because Joe is supposed to go back again. Right. You're right. So if this worked properly for Joe, he would eventually remember himself as like a slave married to Alice. Yeah. Mm. It's difficult because also we don't really That's know a good theory, though. we don't really know if joe is like even properly from this time like it seems like he is but yeah it's it's difficult because of things that happen in the past yeah it, i'm t we can get into this I, I i'm tempted to believe that he's from the current time and either he went back once and that's what he's returning from when he's on the train or he's like destined to go do that because of time funky things um, i also had like a light theory that maybe that he's in a time loop and like after this is all done he's gonna go hop on a train oh. two years before he left and land back where he was and do it all again <laughs> that would be interesting because also like oh like on the cover at least the one i have it's like that spiral staircase you would see in a lighthouse right so maybe we, we're getting like a spiral story here. Like it's kind everything of like, is uh, just repeating. You watched Doctor Who, right? I watched a good amount of it. Were you familiar with like Rory um, from yes. the Matt Smith seasons? He kind of does like a whole like go back in time to maintain the stability of the world and also return to his love. But the Centurion thing, right? Yeah. I kind of wonder if it's like that where he's like when we reach the end of the story, he's going to be like man like in order to make sure that like there exists a universe where the french don't win i have to go back in time and make sure i am around to do it again i mean yeah it's possible we've kind of drifted off though got ahead of ourselves okay yeah, yeah yeah let's refocus refocus uh going back to the train stuff though so joe ends up at an asylum uh we learned this has happened to a large enough amount of people that it's kind of a thing nobody it's not really surprising they say it's epilepsy. I say it really is 1900. And then Joe does remember one person, kind of a Madeline. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's at this part or at least later he'll also remember a man, but he doesn't remember enough about them for it to be uh, like significant, I guess, at this point. Yeah. Later down the line, it, his memory improves on that, right? But now that you mentioned that, does that kind of stopped becoming a topic of discussion by the midway point the man mm, well no it's because he talks about madeline he does bring her up he says right. um it might be his wife or his sister and mm -hmm. i'm like oh yeah, well that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah okay those are definitely the same feeling they would that would invoke the same feeling i suppose <laughs> the man oh, no. though i know the man <laughs> he kind of keeps to himself it's like the only secret he really still has i think so that's why it kind of gets brought up less. That makes sense. Yeah. But in the asylum, he does eventually get picked up by a, by 
uh, Saint Marie. Yeah, I got. I'm nice saying it the most English way possible. <laughs> French pronunciations when I listen to the uh, audiobook. Oh well, then okay, repeat but, them for uh, me. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm gonna do a, a great job with that. Okay. <laughs> well, I think because I think Saint is more like Saint, right? Like Saint Marie. Oh yeah, yeah. You don't really but... do the nt yeah the french doesn't really like the end of any of their words so <laughs> well, it's a lot of times that it gets cut but yes I, i'm i'm good to try to avoid saying his name too many times to not upset anyone who actually knows uh, but yeah he gets picked up by by this guy who at least claims to be his master and has like photo evidence of him being married to alice right who is another one of his slaves he, and this part, <laughs> I, I was wondering, because eventually a little later on, he gets a bit obsessed about Alice's ex-husband, Toby, um, and even says that they look really alike. And I figure like anyone who sees themselves in a picture should recognize themselves, but I don't know what it's like in 1900. So I was like, is this just him? <laughs> and that's like why that's why they were able to pull him back. Or like, did they think that Toby was him when they showed the picture? And they're like, look, there's a picture of you with Alice, but it was actually Toby. Like, is there something funky going on with the picture that they used as a way to either convince them to give them up or like, I don't know. Like, I, I was I was trying to figure out if something was funky there. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, no, I think I think the picture, along with like the slave paperwork, basically, mm -hmm. was enough for me to be like, okay, he's actually a slave slash an indentured servant, like servant. Yeah, he's more of an indentured servant, right? Yeah, because he does work off his time so more indentured servitude than flat out slavery yeah. um regardless horrendous yes what a bombshell <laughs> that this is a part of this book i guess it was not where i was expecting it to start and i also once it did start this way thought it was going to be a much larger part of the story than it ended up being not that it wasn't a significant portion <laughs> like it's a lot of part one but I, I guess I just thought it was like when he eventually gets freed I'm like kind of so like why why was he a slave to begin with for the story purposes you know and there's also this whole thing of like the master character is presented as like very uh kind to him and like sympathetic and like understands like how he just went through this amnesia thing and is takes it very slow on the work that he's supposed to do and he's also like only two years away from being done with his indentured servitude time so i don't know it's just all very and then he like goes on to live with his master even after he's done being a servant so it's it's just all weird vibes i don't i don't love in general like the sympathetic slave owner thing but i especially don't feel like i understood what purpose it served in this book right because it was just creepy like <laughs> St. Marie being like, give me a little kiss yes, in one of the parts. Was I was like, holy fucking shit, get me out of here. I really think it was just a way to like, maybe draw up sympathy for the English side because they are being taken over and like turned into slaves. Right. But I mean, we didn't need, we didn't need it. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's just to like give the vibe that he sees Joe because there, there's, I think there's, two things going back and forth here where it's he sees joe as like a, his child like a, who needs to be like raised and then a version of it where he kind of sees him like his pet that he needs to yes. show off you know like yes. that he's like trophying you know pet vibes for sure because there was also like exotic and like mm, yes the high stuff. value and, and all of that getting thrown around and i yeah. was like no <laughs> please yeah. no yeah. But I guess also it's to like really get a peek at what what the society looks like with the with the French having won their war, right? To say like this is what this sort of language it's I think it's supposed to evoke something for the readers, right? To say like this is especially because this is I think a an English author, right? <laughs> like it's I think so. at least British, let me not be too specific cuz I don't know. But um like I think the idea is to be like if you were an English reader, you're supposed to see yourself in with Joe and you should feel uncomfortable by the behaviors that you're seeing even if he is acting in a sympathetic manner like it should be off-putting yeah well it's definitely off-putting but also part of me can't help but like understand that these are still like we're talking about the French and the English and 
we don't need to talk about their history Mm -hmm. in its entirety to understand that they were doing this shit to everyone else yes yeah it's it's giving um it's giving a little bit of boy in the striped pajamas where it's like in order to see it like it's using the story to it puts the like the original villain of the story in as a victim to make sure that everyone understands the heaviness of it right yeah that is like a controversial thing to do of course because i think there's there is some controversy about whether or not that was like a good move for that story but but it is i think maybe that's what it's going for is a little bit of like let's have english people feel the pain of the thing that they did even though they can't actually really do that right i mean to be fair it's also like based on the i mean alice is jamaican so she's not like english anyway yeah so not too like far off (laughs) what's going on there and joe is described as maybe like southern european i think it's not really clear i was super confused by it because all we know yeah. is he's english i feel like for certain right so i wonder if there he's was like also half. maybe a, a an ambiguity on purpose is it half did, did they mention i that? think so i think his mother was english and i think his father was i don't know why i want to say like persian or somewhere in that area was getting thrown around gotcha. i cannot remember but mm-hmm. there was i mean he was high value i guess for a reason so yeah, even that is like we're if I'm remembering correctly about Joe, we're not getting like presumably, I cannot say for certain, but we're we're not even getting like like actual English like white English as as slaves here. Yeah, no, that's a good point because then that kind of de- detracts a little bit from my claim here. <laughs> so yeah. I I think all around just like very this is a very risky start to the story. <laughs> like very risky move to make to structure the story around this beginning. I wonder where it will go because there's the whole like saints thing that we'll probably talk about later, but there's this whole saints thing that I don't understand that I think has to do with the whole slavery ordeal in the alternate timeline that Joe lives in. So, so maybe, maybe it'll have some sort of more importance or redemption to its inclusion later on that we just can't see because we're, we got launched into the past and haven't left yet. Right. So basically Joe gets picked up by his master. He has no choice but to go with him even though he doesn't remember anything because the doctor is very clear. Like people think or will think you were an escaped slave that ran off to the saints. My understanding of the saints are they're in Scotland. I think it's like the remaining English or uh, other isles, I suppose um, fighting against the French. So still like a rebellion force. So that's where slaves would try to escape to. That's where Alice wants to go. (laughs) Really? She's like, those saints are they're onto something over there right well yeah to be fair alice was sold by like her own mother so yeah. you know and she married somebody she did not love and hates her life so it makes sense yeah <laughs> yep in simple terms <laughs> all bad it's all bad all bad stuff so joe ends up going with them he kind of he kind of settles into that pretty casually like you know, he kind of just exists. I mean, he just kind of accepts it because what else can he do? He has nothing to fight with. So, I will say I did not like Alice very much, though. Oh, no. Just because, like, it's very clear they're not in love. That's fine. She needed to get away from her previous owner, who was a piece of fucking shit, apparently. So, you know, platonic marriages for the betterment of people. I'm all for it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but... It'd be fine if that's all it did, but it doesn't stop there. Like, it's a whole, like, they continue to be married after Joe is no longer, well, I guess they both, do they both get freed? I was a little confused by this. Does Alice get freed at the same time, or is she actually just still a slave? She must, because she has a job. Oh, right. She becomes a nurse, a midwife. A nurse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's, all right. So so they get freed, and I'm like, okay, at this point, like, what is what is this marriage doing? <laughs> Except now that Alice... Alice wants sex. <laughs> and... Honestly, oh my god, this made me so uncomfortable. And I was <laughs> yes. like, I wasn't sure if it was like, oh my gosh, it was, it was just like, sure, you like, Joe is like, okay, I should be wanting to have sex with her. She's fucking beautiful. And I'm like, okay, I can't relate, but okay. <laughs> but but he's also the, creeped out by it. Too. He, he does not like it because he's like, she's 20 years younger than me. And also, you know, Alice like, is, like, so pushy about it. She's like, yeah. 
so like forceful and it was giving such ick it was giving me such ick vibes she went to the church about it oh that part really I got know. me she went to the church oh and was like God. um my husband doesn't want to do me like can we fix this please <laughs> oh, it was such bad energy and then they end up having a kid together lily and alice like fucking hates her right right and i'm like, like what joe is, is like this kid is is an angel like we really bond and then alice just like doesn't want to be a mother it's like well you should have thought about that when you were going to the church forcing him to have sex with you yeah alice clearly still loves joe's brother and that's like made very clear um even joe can pick up on it and he doesn't mm -hmm. even remember his brother <laughs> and all joe can think about is like how bad he feels because it's like he wants to help alice and he like wants to be there for her and i'm like why <laughs> literally she's like forcing you to have 10 minute sex and like it's the most uncomfortable experience for it must be for both of them but... yeah i can't imagine like i don't understand why she even bothers he like that's just like hard to read too because he also goes like outside after and like cries after one of them oh doesn't he God, like so terrible just like mm. but we do get lily and she is an angel i think it's because and i think joe mentions this he doesn't have to be like anybody but who he currently is with lily because right. she has only known that version of him to be fair she's like a toddler but <laughs> i i understand what he means yeah there's like the newness of life there right so there's there's something fresh start about it all even beyond the li the literal of it you know it's like for him it's like he's he's needing someone who's kind of in a similar position to him right like kind of new to the world so but yeah he, he doesn't have friends or anything to to align with he doesn't know other amnesiacs as far as we know so he, he needs someone like lily around yeah and i really did like how much he took care of her like he was just a good dad i mean except for that one incident but, yeah, <laughs> but that was kind of that. not on him wasn't he having like an episode he was having an episode. He was having I think it just didn't yeah. look like it. And he mentions too, he's like, I don't really have like convulsions or anything like that. So I think it maybe wasn't obvious to everyone around him, but he, he describes kind of experiencing a moment and then it's like, oh shit, Lily's about to get crushed very slowly. Yeah. <laughs> and she was fine. She was fine. Uh, I don't know if she was fine. <laughs> but people do make a really big scene and he, they were probably right that he shouldn't have brought her in there. At least not to run freely as a toddler. Yeah. Him wanting to take her to, like, <laughs> the Arctic, basically. I was like, that's <laughs> yeah. crazy. Yeah, I can understand, though, when it's like Alice is the alternative, you know? I know, yeah. But definitely when we get to um, when he does that and he's, like, at the border, I was like, man, if Lily was here, this would probably be ten, ten times worse. Yes, I agree. We did forget one thing, though. There is a moment, um, we'll probably talk about this more later, but what kind of kickstarts him getting his job at the welder's place light house place whatever it's called is he gets a postcard in the mail but it's been there for like 90 years you're right so this is this is i didn't even think about it so they this is because supposedly madeline the person who or m is who signs it right m mm -hmm. m signs the letter supposedly leaves it at the post office and is like don't send this until like 90 years from now right is that do i understand correctly yeah well, we don't know if M is the one that sent it to the post office. That's fair. M is just the one who wrote it. M is just the one who wrote it. So it's like a specific lighthouse. And the message is just very short in English, which is dangerous language to speak during this uh, time. It just says, dearest Joe, come home, comma, if you remember M. Mm. So dearest joe i mean that could be platonic romantic we don't yeah. really you know it depends but if you remember it's interesting though because if m were to be like I, I don't know if m were to be any of these people from the past like what what does home mean it seems like when he goes up to the lighthouse the kite is kind of like this was a bad idea for you <laughs> you know maybe because it's sent later in time than that moment in time for kite and by later in time they're like oh no we actually needed joe to be here right so basically the events that happen here is he gets this he ignores it for two years honestly a king what a king <laughs> he sees a mysterious lighthouse and a message from somebody he doesn't know he assumes madeline i think um pretty consistently i think he still kind of does 
And he's like, oh, well, I don't know what this is. See you later. The weird thing is he does talk to who would be his future employer about the lighthouse um, because he figures out who made it. And right. the issue is it was built in like their present. So either 1898 or 1900. But this postcard is from 90 years ago. So it being a postcard of a place that shouldn't exist, like it's a little weird, but not weird enough for Joe to do anything about it, really. Right. The only reason he ends up going to investigate it is because it, it breaks down, right? Mm -hmm. um, and somebody needs to go. It, it wasn't going to be Joe originally because he's an ex-slave. Like, he's not supposed to do these kinds of things. He shouldn't be capable of it, <laughs> you know? That he's kind also, of stuff. like, forced to do a minimum wage job, and it's kind of implied that this is not a minimum wage task. <laughs> Very much so. Um, but he he volunteers because he's going to have to also stay there and man the lighthouse for like the winter. Mm -hmm. And he like he just wants to like remember things. So he's like, I guess if I like go up to this lighthouse and this image and stay there for a while, maybe something will come back to me. So so it potentially could be beneficial or useless, but he's willing to risk it. And I mean, at the very least, he gets to go away for a bit. And he wanted to take Lily with him. Crazy. <laughs> Literal infant but okay. And Alice quickly shuts that shit down. Yeah. She's like, I don't care about this child generally, but enough to not do that. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's a bad idea. Yeah. But he ends up going, he also ends up going to this, uh, psych, psycho, not a psychological, it's called something else, but it's like, um, Oh, psychical something. Psychical. psychical. Yes. Yes. It was a yeah. weird word. Yeah. He's been invited for like two years. <sighs> yeah. I didn't understand because this of whole his section. his quote unquote epilepsy, his case is interesting, and other people who had the same amnesia problem end up as well. So he goes to that, and he figures out that someone there also maybe knew Madeline, uh, but nothing comes of this conversation. We just learned that her last name may be Shale because the other person doesn't remember enough either, right? No, they they think the other person Albert thinks that Madeline was his sister. Ah, that's right. But then they, they like looked up his parents and weren't able to find that. I think so, yeah. At, at the very least, Albert has regained whatever memories he was supposed to have of that present time. Joe is still the special case that has not remembered anything. That kind of adds to your theory from earlier, though, that it's possible that when he remembered, like after coming out of the amnesia, he's remembering like a new present timeline that doesn't include Madeline suddenly. And so... Well, I guess he's remembering the previous timeline if he remembers Madeline. Like maybe there, Madeline and him were siblings in the pa in the previous timeline, and then things happened. He had amnesia, and suddenly Madeline doesn't exist anymore. And so when they like try to find her, they can't. But like she did exist and just doesn't exist now. Yeah, because also, also we'll talk about this more with Madeline. But Madeline is theoretically from this present time, right? Because she goes back on the kingdoms. Yeah, that's a good point. We know that that pretty much for sure. Yeah, so history, like time, might be trying to correct itself. Right, like if she dies in the past. Yes, yes, maybe. But then Joe is still special for some reason. Yeah, I guess maybe this is why. The, I was like, at first, I was like, I don't really know why the turtle experiment, the tortoise experiment even matters. <laughs> but maybe it's for things like this. Yeah, I think it establishes some rules. Mm -hmm. But getting to the lighthouse, um, there's a weird... Expl I will say, there's a very quick turnaround with answers in this book. Like, a weird frozen winter thing happens, and then we get the answer. Yeah. The turtles are brought up. We understand why they're there. Truly. No, it's like, yeah, every time I'm making a note like that, it's, it's getting turned around pretty quickly. Usually the next chapter. Also, when he gets to the lighthouse, somebody... The generator didn't just break, somebody broke it. And we very quickly learn who that is. And it ends up being Kite, Missouri Kite, uh, who almost dies. Joe saves him. They have like a night together. Not in the romantic sense. They literally just kind of chill. <laughs> play cards. Yeah, they play Be some dudes. cards. Yep. Just hanging out, two burrows. Yeah. <laughs> and Kite is like, okay, you're, you're going to leave now and you're not going to come back to this lighthouse. And Joe is like, a little strange, but okay. And then Kite's <laughs> like, also these pillars, 
they change time and joe's like that's crazy but okay <laughs> and then he does leave but then he forgets all about kite and goes back right <laughs> like forgets that he's not supposed to return to the lighthouse yeah he was like um i'm supposed to be over at that lighthouse why right. am i here like, what now am I doing over here <laughs> then he goes back and then he gets captured <laughs> it was kite Sorry, was Kite trying to save him? Like, I just was a little confused yes. by this whole Kite phenomenon. Like, was Kite trying to be like, please don't do this because I know who you are and it's going to save you to not come back? Or was he trying to save himself because he knows who Joe is and he knows Joe's got dirt on him, so he doesn't want him to come back? Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, No, I think... Because remember, he was pretty upset when they end up capturing Joe. Yeah, I think Kite was trying to save Joe. So he didn't end up in the past. But honestly, ooh, that would be interesting. Yeah, I think I did definitely thought at first it was to save Joe's butt. But now and what we've read towards the later parts of what we read, like it, it does feel like Kite is doing a lot of things to save his own butt. Yeah. So what we learn about Kite, he's the captain of the, what is his ship called? The Agamemnon, uh, Agamemnon of course. Yeah. Oh, fuck that guy. He haunts me, even still. <laughs> and he's he seems like a pretty good captain, but he's also crazy. He's absolutely crazy. Like, he, he's just, like, just kind of kills his own people and, I don't know, has no emotion, is very machine-like. He disassociates big time. Yes, but is also good with kids, he, <laughs> apparently, well, when he's not killing some them. Some of them, yeah. We do learn that... Um, his sister is also aboard. Uh, she's older. She's a surgeon. And she does admit she made him like this because she used to work on a ship and he was a kid when he was with her. Uh, parents died. Very tragic. And they kind of faced combat when like the Spanish were helping the Americas. Uh, or I should say the colonies. And she basically showed him like horrible things and was like, you need to be ready for this. And then was never kind to him again. So <laughs> Yeah, she kind of steeled him up. Yeah. And it's like makes sense, I guess, for the time period. Obviously very tragic whenever a child has to be turned into a soldier. Mm -hmm. And I we're just kind of seeing the repercussions of that even now. Like he will kill somebody and then forget he even did it. It's yeah, he he's feels like more of the sort of person who's like like I was steeled up as a kid, so like I'm willing to do that <laughs> to you know, especially the older kids. But um, yeah, like is unable to see himself in that kid, right? Like especially with Fred, it's like yeah, I was a kid who went through a really hard time and like grew up fighting wars, you know. And to, but to him, it's like what it doesn't matter. Like that's not even a thought process going through his head. Yeah, and it's obviously like obviously some things do bother him. Like he is willing to lie to Joe about a lot of things. And Agatha is a lot more pushy about sharing that information. But we do get hints of of Kite seeming like a human. Like Joe notes, oh, he looks very tired. Like he's being obvious in these in, in these certain like negative aspects of himself. Like emotionally, he's being honest, at least to Joe, which I thought was really interesting. But it depends on if he's being honest to Joe because he and Joe have some kind of past together or if Kite is just so broken and tired that he doesn't <laughs> care if people see that he's tired. That's an interesting point. I definitely thought it was because of the past things, right? There's like kind of moments of comfort where he where he's sharing information. So and he doesn't if he were that broken, he'd be doing it with other people, too, I think. So, yeah, I think the apple scene towards the end when Agatha gets blasted out of existence. <laughs> Kite is like, if I can stand here calm and eat an apple, then everybody else will be calm. So I think, yeah, I think it's just a him. Yeah, I think it's a him and Joe type of thing. But the question is like, yeah, he's doing this, but is it like enough, right? He He's like, he's a broken person and like some forgiveness can be afforded but like how much oh it's like enough for redemption you mean yeah oh god yeah it's kite is just mm, he's a special level of wild that i think 
supersedes uh, crediting it to his sister treating him a certain way <laughs> like i don't know without yeah. knowing more of the details but i, I also i keep saying I, in my head i keep saying his sister it's really so it's really a combination of circumstance and his sister right like it's not fair to be like it's agatha like did i think agatha's willing to take credit but it's not really just her right like it's not she was just doing what she thought to like she was just doing her best to make sure that they had a place to go right like that's how they ended up in a warship in the americas so although i don't think it's really fair to just blame her for it all in all i just don't think any of it is enough to justify like the way he like literally is willing to kill a 14 year old kid you know and and just the way he treats people in general so it's like throw away lives yeah i think um something important to note is when agatha when the fall of london happens and kite ends up saving like agatha and a bunch of other people agatha notes like she did not recognize him and also jem who was from the kingdom ship and who was married or would be married or eventually marries or something with agatha he is not with kite and we do know kite kills jem at some point so it's like there is a a lot of time where agatha is not with them and kite is doing things on his own we don't know what is what's happened yeah it, it just feels like that's why it feels more like he's a product of war than a product of his sister yeah i would agree but it's still like there is still a line basically I, my personal opinion is that he's not redeemable but yeah i think my line was the fred incident to yeah, be honest for sure who is fred the best damn character in this book <laughs> and he's gone yeah He's like a kid on the ship. There's a lot of kids on this ship, to be honest. Yes, I always thought that was very weird. <laughs> There's this many kids on this warship. Yeah, enough that they're having like school <laughs> on the ship. And Fred is basically tasked with looking after Joe. So they get kind of close. And obviously, I think the author is hinting at that Fred is somebody with disabilities. We don't know. Mm. Yeah, because they kind of imply that he's he behaves at a younger age than the age he is yeah and he obviously can't pick up very well on like social cues and and things like that and like high emotional response too yes and he has a moment where he's hanging out with joe and then he remembers him or like suddenly recognizes him and it's at first i thought oh he's remembering that joe is like french basically mm -hmm. like oh this is not one of my english pals this is somebody else that's what i thought at first but then kite comes over and is livid and joe i think joe very quick in this book i feel like he picks up on a lot of stuff mm -hmm. like implications and like how the past might affect the future like he he's he got, has a good handle on it, I think. I mean, he's got to be because he's digging for it, right? <laughs> this is what he's here for, really, in his Sometimes head. he pushes a little too much, but... <laughs> Definitely. You know, we'll, we'll forgive him. And he, Joe obviously wants to know what Fred wants, like, wants to say. Like, who am I? Like, you know, very normal responses to have. And Kite is just not having it. And then, like, a wave hits and uh, Fred's gone. But it was not the wave that took him overboard. The way he... Mm. <laughs> the way he just, like, hides it with that as though no one's gonna know. And the way that Joe doesn't tell anyone because he's like, who would believe me? Like, uh, just all of it's bad. And then the way that... <laughs> God damn it, I'm, like, confusing everyone's name now. Um, the way that Kite is willing to just go to his sister and be like, he just went overboard, that's all. No, I think you're mis I think Joe goes to Agatha. That Joe goes to Agatha for Joe Joe goes to Agatha and is like Kite just pushed Fred overboard. And no, Agatha no, no, is no, like to, to, Why? Isn't it, doesn't Fred's sister ask? Oh, yes, yes, yes. That happens um after like they fight that friendship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, like almost towards the end of the game. She's like, Where where is Fred? Do you know where he ended up? And Kite is just cool as can be, went overboard. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> holy shit it's, at least we do i kind of am glad we get um, joe's thought process there because it was wild and joe is like yes this is wild <laughs> so yes and, um, and it is it is it's just, mm, yeah I don't, I don't know if i have more to say about it i'm I, I was just pretty upset by it and it's like this is definitely the point where it's like I, I maybe it's biased because we got time with fred and like he is a sympathetic character that this is where it crosses the line for us 
I'm sure other people felt this way much sooner if it was like their comrade or sibling that got killed by kite, right? But mm-hmm. yeah, this is it, and it doesn't. And we'll we'll have to talk about the theories on it later, I think. But we have to like, I wonder what it will end up being that Fred knew, and how we'll feel about kite's choice to use that as justification to kill fred (laughs) like i know it won't be enough but i wonder how far from enough it is yeah because joe thinks like just knowing who he is in the past it's not enough to justify killing somebody so kite it must have been personal to kite yeah and i think joe is right about that and if it is for a personal reason kite's fucked he's fucked like he 100 percent not redeemable like there's it's just like it would have to be a damn good reason <laughs> yeah to push a kid overboard yep. yeah i'm excited to to theorize i mean i think uh also moving back a little bit another person who <laughs> does not seem to think kite is redeemable is agatha <laughs> yeah <laughs> because she goes topside has a gun and is like okay i'm gonna kill my brother yeah <laughs> And I'm then we get a shocked. flashback. This didn't happen years sooner, but yeah. Honestly, we get a flashback. And so we're kind of left waiting like, oh my God, is she actually going to shoot him? And then we get to the present past again and Agatha gets ruined and nothing happens. Not even a confrontation. Like they don't even talk. Yeah. She just immediately gets killed. And I was it's, like, no, oh, it's like it didn't happen. I know. It's a little sad. Yeah, I was like kind of confused then. I think it was the beginning of chapter 27. I was like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> like, like as far as as far as far Kite knows, like nothing happened there, right? Yeah, I don't know if he even noticed. Yeah. Right. Like, it's. I mean, he's he's doing his whole Captain Calm ordeal, you know? So yeah, I don't even think he noticed. And like when he, when, when um Joe comes up and is like, how are you doing? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, we're already at the how are you doing stage like so i don't know we had, there was no like outcry there was no nothing from from kite himself like we're just at the like so how's the processing going <laughs> you know it just right. it feels like it skipped so many steps right because like agatha is his sister but basically agatha raised him yeah and she is She's just dead now, and I guess we're not going to talk about it. (laughs) Honestly, I think her dying and then also Fred dying, like, Fred's was intentional. This was more, like, circumstantial, but these are two characters that knew Joe and were willing to give him information. He has, like, no power now. He has, yeah, the only reason Joe gets the letter from Madeline is because he basically threatens Clay. Because Kite is like, if you talk to Clay, you're going to fuck up his mental. And Joe is like, okay, bet. <laughs> yeah, he showed his, his, uh, showed his cards there. Yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, the whole Clay thing. The way he, he treats Clay is like, I don't know, I, I kind of, he's very protective of Clay. And he gives the reason is like, oh, Clay has like PTSD, right? Which doesn't line up with the way he treats anyone who's actively in war (laughs) and is lined up to have ptsd and in fact i would say he's probably going to be the source of a few people's ptsd so i don't understand why he why clay gets special treatment but that's not a problem it's okay like i think clay he should be he should be understanding of to some degree not to the level he is because of something that happens but um, he should be understanding of clay but why does he not extend that to like someone else who's experiencing some other like you know mental thing right like it's something that is outside of their control i think fred has something going on that's outside of his control the way he responds to him when they get into that argument just before he kills him is not like i don't know it just it, it, i feel like it it was so heated and and seemed to have something extra coming from fred that he he was not looking out for himself when he was having that conversation i would expect that kite's role there should have been to look out for fred the same way he looks out for clay instead of becoming vengeful and killing him and like clay loki not loki loki clay tries to murder joe yes but he's like oh like that's just clay being clay like you have to be kind with him but like oh but it's okay if we murder fred for just trying to share information you don't want shared Right, because it's, it's weird. Like, if Joe is so important to the war, like, as a mechanic, 
then his life should be prized above everything else. Right. But what Kite seems to focus on is whatever personal issue him and Joe have that Joe doesn't even remember. Like, if it does end up being a personal issue, I think it will be. But it's like, there's, like, it's just, it doesn't look good for Kite's character in that regard. Like, yes, he's being understanding towards Clay, but you're matching that with him literally willing to kill people for his own personal reasons. Mm -hmm. I wonder if Kite is afraid that whenever this thing comes out, it's going to cause a mutiny. Oh. Because he's Uh, not getting on people's good sides with his current behavior. Yeah. I don't know if that even matters to Kite, though. Yeah. He did seem kind of willing to die when he, like, went to the lighthouse towards the beginning. (laughs) Yeah, he's also willing to not take Joe. Like, he warns him off. So there's, like, the war is not his priority. There's something else going on. That's a good point. Very interesting. I think I just don't like Kite. (laughs) Honestly, mood. (laughs) Uh, uh, Yeah, same, to be honest. He's definitely an interesting character, and I want to know. Right, I want to know more, and I want to know what's going on behind, you know, in his brain. And I want to know who Joe is and how it all connects. But I don't think I like Kite (laughs) in general. Like, I want to know more about him. I just don't like him. I think that's why I'm worried about, like, the vibes him and Joe have. I agree. Because sometimes they seem, like, to really trust and like each other. And then sometimes Joe understands that he's a prisoner and is like, oh, my God, Kite is intense right now. I should not trust him. And I'm like, yeah, you shouldn't trust him. And also the name drop of his first name being Missouri. I (laughs) instantly got worried because of the M. I was like, oh, no, is he the postcard? Is you had a much him? better eye for that. I didn't think about that, honestly, until until we talked. But that's such a good point. Uh, honestly, well, to be honest, I could not imagine Kite writing Dearest Joe. It doesn't <laughs> seem to be in his vocabulary, but who oh, knows? Also a very good point. <laughs> we, should, we should talk about the kingdoms. The, so the kingdoms is this boat from, I guess, from Joe's time, right? Yes like a big mechanical beast that <laughs> that these folks have never seen before yeah the kingdoms ends up stumbling into the past basically and is being hunted down by a friendship and ends up meeting the deceiver i think or the defiance i can't remember which d word it is yeah the defiance i think the defiance the ship that kite is on at the minute not the captain but the ship he's working on and we through madeline's letter i think learn she like she fucking pushed jem overboard yep crazy play she just, like sacrificed him <laughs> to, well she was to trying to save happen. him yeah yeah, yeah. it did in a, in a sense she did but <laughs> to, to a degree until kite ruins it yeah so madeline says there's seven people i think on this ship and so we have the captain who ends up getting killed later by the french uh we have madeline who ends up in a French prison um, while she's writing this letter. Jem gets pushed overboard. He ends up with the English. Him and Kite develop a kind of relationship, which also has some vibes to it. But, you know, we learned Kite also ends up killing Jem somehow. Um, Who knows how directly, though, I guess. And then there's four other people. We don't know. One of them is presumed to be Madeline's husband. And then one of them, either that husband or somebody else, might be Joe. Right. maybe we don't know but then there's like a big gap of like how that would lead to joe ending up where he did right to be fair joe only read the first bit of madeline's Which, letter how dare he i know read half of it and then just put it back in your pocket what to be, <laughs> no, to be fair no way. this one actually this one actually had a good reason though he he because he got seasick so i was like oh okay, yeah. this is like a, an explainable reason why he would stop reading that would be me too honestly but still i'm upset as somebody who cannot read in the car, I yep. get him. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> but so we still have more of Madeline's experience, which will be the French side of things, because um, she ends up basically working for the French as people from the future. That's a lot of powerful tech. And Joe might be among that group. We don't really know yet. I just don't know. Yeah, I don't know how I could possibly connect the dots between Joe being on that boat and then coming back i guess he like so that there would have to be some point where joe is not a prisoner is able to get back to the lighthouse to go back to his time and then get on a train and go back down 
before right. then getting his amnesia. Well, to be fair, one of my thoughts was Jem and uh, when Jem first ends up on the English ship, he thinks it's like a ghost ship because, you know, and he asks Kite if like he's a ghost and Kite's like, that's fucking stupid. No, I'm like a human. Um, but then in the future, Joe's present, maybe. Joe also asks Kite, like, in the night, he's like, are you a ghost? And Kite is like, yes and no, which, you know, makes sense time. But I thought it was really interesting that they both asked the same question. So my thought was like, is it possible these could be the same person? But then I was like, that's stupid. Agatha literally, like, (laughs) married one of them. Is this like a, is she my wife or my sister situation? (laughs) Yeah, basically. (laughs) It was like an interesting thread, but I just, uh, yeah, I can't figure out how Agatha would not, like, if Joe was Jem, then he's obviously still alive. Or maybe mm-hmm. he dies in the future. He is going to die, right? Killed him by some sending weird... him back in, uh, to the future, I guess. Yeah, some weird time shit is happening. But then Agatha, like, why would she not remember, like, look at him and be like, oh my god, it's you you know yeah so i don't don't think think that's that's the case yeah but i was it's still weird that question came up twice i hate to cop out of it but i just don't think there's enough information to know to like even have a good theory of how whether or not joe was on that ship and like yeah like how he would have ended up back there yeah i think the only reason i'm like thinking he's on that ship is because when he asks about like who he is agatha is like you have to tell him about the kingdoms so like obviously yeah. he's connected to the ship in some capacity. No, that's a good point. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know how. And then he has two train tickets in the future. Mm-hmm. So like he was supposed to come with somebody else, possibly oh. the solitary man. That's a good who point. might also be M. Like maybe they yeah, were going like, to come so to the he future had together. Two tickets, but actually didn't get to use the second one. Yeah, like maybe the plan was for him and M to come back together. But then M realized he had to stay in the past for some reason. Yeah, I guess that's that's possible. Well, yeah, because then he could go to the whoever it is could go to the past and send that letter when that happens. So, so yeah, I guess that could work. But wouldn't they have not gotten the two train tickets until they made it to the future, right? So I feel like that decision would have happened by that point. Yeah, unless like they did end up in the future, had gotten the tickets, and then because M knew. Once you got far enough away, you would forget he sent Joe off. They sent Joe off alone, knowing he would forget about him having to travel with somebody. That's kind of good, too. And then he went into the past and was like, I, this is like where I need to be because he has to set everything in motion. Mm. This is getting complicated. I guess that's how time stories go. That, that, yeah. That's very possible, though. Because it's possible that the decision to get on the train and stay in the present was a selfish decision right Mm -hmm. it was a let's not care about the world let's just do what we want to do but the person in the postcard ended up deciding to fix the war instead right and so we have like the sacrifice joe needs to go to the train station alone he needs to you know do everything in the present so he ends up at the lighthouse so he goes back to the past so he changes things honestly that makes a lot of sense if m is um kite because yeah i could kind of see that where kite like if kite and him are having a thing right like they're they are romantically connected or something like kind of sending him off to save him kind of the same way he gets upset when he comes back to the lighthouse right yeah and i think the lighthouse is connected to kite 100 percent yeah because a gem creates the tattoo of the lighthouse that kite has and it is the the eileen moore lighthouse so if M makes sense as I think Kite. You're on it. I think you're on it for M being Kite. I think, yeah, I think Madeline's a red herring. Me too. I wonder, I do wonder why he thinks he's a, like she's the sister or wife. Like he seems kind of attached to the wife thing too, because I, I think when we get the whole scenes with Alice and him not wanting to have sex, it might be trying to imply that he's not interested in sex with women, but I, I'll hate that if that's the case. Also, he does kind of like push against that idea. I think in the way he talks about it, he's just like, no, I'm just like literally not attracted to this woman. And also like, I think he thinks he's married to someone and thinks he's cheating if he does. <laughs> For, I think that's like, maybe not the direct, but like maybe the underlying feeling he's having about it is that he's being like 
not being faithful if he has sex with Alice, who is apparently his wife, but he doesn't remember marrying. So, yeah. And I would say this might be me going out on a limb here. I would say even if he was single and didn't think he had a wife and he still didn't want to have sex with Alice because he didn't love her, that would also be okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's why I don't want to say for sure that it's like implying that he's gay or something, but yeah, yeah, I agree. But then, yeah, I do feel like there needs to be like a reason for the Madeline character to be there, even if she's like for a reason for him to feel that way about her, even if that's not what she is. Yeah. I mean, if she moves to a French prison, I wonder if she does help in some kind of breakout situation. Yeah, maybe that would that would make sense. Because, again, we need to find a way for him to get back to where he is. So that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Weird. Weird. Weird time stuff. <laughs> uh i don't yeah kite makes sense but uh i also don't like kite so this is gonna be an awkward second part of this book i think yeah i think if this book is able to get me to like kite by the end it's getting five stars oh holy shit <laughs> that would be, be crazy the most impressive feat honestly i think i think that might be everything kind of important um basically just a lot of questions about why there's so many people going through this strange memory issue why Joe is different, like how the postcard will resolve, the two tickets, blah, blah, blah. We kind of know how time works because of the, the turtle experiment. But yeah, Joe is still an interesting outlier. So just uh, a lot of questions that I, I'm pretty positive we will get answers to because this book is pretty direct. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think we'll feel completed at the end of this book. Yes, at some least others. we'll have that. <laughs> yeah. It hasn't been like an awful reading experience though no, i agree i it's i i honestly i could it could be better though <laughs> just because i don't <laughs> i just don't like the level of political war detail that it goes into i'm sure there's lots of people I this agree. book is written for it's just not me <laughs> it's not me yeah honestly a bit of a mistake on my part because i also don't really like like political like i don't even really like historical fiction that much yeah same <laughs> Yeah, so this one might have been a miss on our part. Sorry, we we tried to branch out a little, you know? Yeah, yeah. We don't want to just stick to, like, the same stuff all the time. Mm. And to be fair, like, I think if the worst stuff wasn't in this and it was just that whimsical time travel history thing I thought it was going to be, I might have liked it more. Yeah. It's just, it's just kind of heavy. We'll have to know? see when we get to the end, like... I think this is going to be a different experience reflecting on this book because I already know it's in a genre I'm not already fond of. Mm -hmm. So trying to like, what's the word here? Like put into perspective how I feel about the book in the lens of you don't, you know, I'm just not a person who likes historical fiction that much. So I, like making sure to still give it its credit, you know, and, and uh, find what it is I enjoy in the story and make sure that I'm not like downvoting it because of things that belong to the genre as opposed to the book yeah yeah we don't want to be like too biased like yeah. against the book exactly but yeah i guess we'll see what happens so uh part two should be interesting if you have any of your oh god if you have any of your own theories thoughts or want to just talk about something i don't know uh we're on twitter <laughs> at 50 50 underscore books um hopefully this episode wasn't too much of a downer sorry <laughs> i think we did okay yeah, if you do have any historical fiction recommendations, though, that wouldn't be bad because obviously yeah. it's not our genre, but, you know, maybe there's other things out there that aren't as heavy or, you know, have a different vibe than this that are still historical fiction that maybe we would like. So you can yeah. always give us recommendations for that. I think we tried to get this one with the, the sort of timeline. At, you know, this is not just historical fiction, right? Like there's there's definitely an extra layer, but it, we still might have not hit it on the head. We were more focused on the fantasy aspect of this, I think. Yeah. And the memory thing. So uh, any recommendations for that would be appreciated, but obviously no guarantee. <laughs> and I guess we will catch you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.